What's up, little grizzlies? And we're here today to talk to you about Huntington disease. Huntington disease is a chromosomally inherited disease that is non-preventable and there's currently no cures for it. This disease directly affects the brain and central nervous system. The central nervous system is in charge of regulating and maintaining homeostasis for the entire body. It does this through its receptors that keep us in touch with the body's environment, both internally and externally. Um, and it maintains chemical and electrical homeostasis through neurotransmitters and neurons in the brain, as well as organs of the endocrine system. The effects of HD cause a domino effect that causes a bunch of different symptoms throughout the homeostasis process. And a lot of those symptoms cause suffering. Um, the, main, the main pathway is through a protein misfolding, and my colleague Allie can tell you more about that. Yeah, so <clears throat> the Huntington gene stems from an error in DNA on the fourth chromosome that causes Huntington's disease. Um, so everyone has this Huntington gene, but only those who inherit the mutation will develop Huntington's and risk passing it on to their children. Due to the mutation being a dominant trait, there's a 50% chance of a person with Huntington's um, that they will pass it on to their children, assuming that their partner does not have Huntington's, um, the mutation. So if their partner had it, it would just increase the Yeah, there's like a 100% chance. <laughs> um, so the mutation in the Huntington gene is referred to as the CAG expansion, which refers to the nucleotides in the DNA coding, so CAG, so that nucleotide triplet repeated over and over again is what um, the CAG expansion is referring to. So people unaffected by Huntington's have a repetition of the CAG nucleotides of about 20, but people with Huntington's have the repetition of about 40 or more. So this repetition, the CAG expansion, codes for the Huntington protein, which is what causes Huntington's disease. Um, but it's a very large protein and it forms clump-like clump -like structures in the brain, specifically the brain cells, causing damage to them to the point of cell death. So onset of symptoms usually occurs at like age 25 to 30. Um, but going back to the CAG expansion, if there's a repetition of more than 40, so like if it's up in the 50s or like sometimes upwards of 70, it can occur, the onset can occur way sooner, like 20 or 25 and is much more severe. Um, when looking at different populations around the world, people living in the Lake Maracaibo region of Venezuela are predicted to have the most prevalence with about 700 per 100,000 people. Um, literature also suggests that people of European descent have an average prevalence of 9.71 per 100,000, the least found among um, indigenous African populations of South Africa, Japan, China, Korea, and Finland, with prevalences ranging from 0 0.1 to 2 per 100,000. In the U.S., though, there are fewer than 200 cases, 200,000 cases per year. So regardless of who you are, where you are, if you have HD, it's going to be pretty hard for you and the people that love you in your life because um, eventually people with HD lose the ability to work, drive, and manage tasks at home. And um, kind of unrelated, but they're also more susceptible to developing diabetes, um, which is a part of that domino effect uh, based off the initial method of HD affecting the brain cells and nerve cells. Um, other symptoms include uh, memory lapses, mood swings, clumsiness, muscle problems, insomnia, uh, chronic fatigue. Um, it can be hard for 
people with HD to recognize when they first have HD. A lot of times early symptoms are just viewed as aggression or strange behavior. Um, it's also hard for like the um, patient's loved ones to recognize it. Um, I, there's been a lot of um, like blogs that I've read that um, loved ones usually just assume that they're being like moody or they're just like not thinking or they're just forgetting things and they just get really frustrated with said person. It's, it's kind of a hard thing to know that you have, right, unless it's already known in the family's gene pool or if mm -hmm. there's been genetic testing done, which is pretty expensive to do. Yeah, I feel like with the nature of some of the symptoms too, it can be, it's like commonly misdiagnosed. Mm. And the early onset um, stages. So someone might be diagnosed with, say, anxiety or an anger um, problem. Yeah. When really, if chromosomal testing were done, it would show that it was the beginning of Huntington disease um, starting. Yeah. Especially because sometimes it doesn't, like, symptoms don't start until, like, mid-30s. It can be really hard to get a diagnosis at that age that's this severe. Especially when you're in your 30s. I mean, I know most people I know in their 30s are working and supporting themselves. And, and possibly kids. And possibly kids or maybe a loved one yeah. even. So, I mean, I, the best thing to know that you, you should be anticipating symptoms and then you can prepare to treat those symptoms. Um, also prevention, like if you're, if you know you have the mutation to not, to choose to not reproduce, mm -hmm. right? To not send that um, chromosome back into the gene pool, mm -hmm. available gene pool, I should say, right? Um, yeah, it's a sad thing. Um, Thankfully, there are therapies and treatments that exist. Um, all of these address symptom management. Um, that's really the best thing that currently exists. Yeah. Um, Maria, you researched some like psychosomatic drugs to refer. Yeah, there are numerous medications um, to help with the mental symptoms that accompany. Um, there are also uh, physical therapy treatments to help maintain mobility and prevent falls. Um, also, occupational therapists are helpful um, to help with everyday activities. And they might install ramps or handrails in the house to help with movement. Uh, dietitians can be very useful and help with the uh, weight loss that accompanies Huntington's disease. Uh, as well as a speech therapist, which can help with uh, communication alternatives when problems could arise. So 